Say the word sparrow, and most people will think of house sparrows, which they may call English sparrows. It's a species that many people scorn. First brought to North America as a biological control agent for agricultural pests, they soon became ubiquitous pests themselves. Whether you admire their pluck or disdain their impact on our native wildlife, or both, be aware that from a North American perspective, house sparrows are not sparrows at all, but rather a drab, temperate relative of the tropical weaver finches. When ornithologists speak of North American sparrows, they refer to a rather diverse family, the Emberizidae, which comprises species with short conical bills, such as seed eaters, towhees, long spurs, and old world buntings, in addition to a couple of dozen species that actually bear the name sparrow. Once they pass an initial level of intimidation, many birders find that the sparrows are really a delightful group of birds. In many ways, they might be thought of as the warblers of winter, brightening drab days and brushier grassland habitats with their sometimes subtle but very real beauty. Sometimes it's not even subtle, as in the elegant black-throated sparrow. While few birders are enthusiastic about learning scientific names, paying attention to the genera, the somewhat unusual plural of genus, of sparrows and their kin, can really help you get a handle on their identification. Towhees, genus Pipolo, are medium-sized ground-dwelling birds of forests and brushy areas. The eastern towhee is particularly famous for its ringing Drink Your Tea song. Its western counterpart, the spotted towhee, is not so distinguished vocally, but its black back is handsomely spangled with white. The sparrows in the genus Imophila are large and long-tailed. Mostly drab in color, they include some of our finest and most interesting singers. The Bachman sparrow, which favors grass and palmetto scrub and dry open pine woods of the south, has a lovely varied song, rivaling even the thrushes. Cassin Sparrow often takes to the air to sing, delivering its high, sweet trill as it flutters back to earth. It also sings while perched. Long-tailed, but much smaller, are the round-bellied Spizella Sparrows. While most sparrows tend to stay low, the Spizellas often fly a bit higher, frequently alighting in small trees and shrubs. The chipping sparrow is the most widely distributed of the Spizellas. The genus Amadramus includes some of the most secretive and little known of our songbirds. Short-tailed and big-billed, they stick to dense grasses, often preferring to scurry away rather than fly. Many are closely associated with wetlands, like the seaside sparrow. The grasshopper sparrow is the most frequently seen of this group. Its name comes not from its diet, but from its insect-like song. The savanna sparrow is placed in its own genus, Passerculus, though it shares some affinities with the Amadramus and was at one time placed with them. Birders often know savanna sparrows by only two field marks, overall streakiness and a yellowish area at the front of the eyebrow. But the yellow can be hard to see or even lacking, so it's good to note savanna's short notched tail which can be a big help distinguishing it from other streaky sparrows, such as the song sparrow. Song sparrows, genus Melospiza, have notably long, rounded tails. Unsurprisingly, song sparrows are loud, tireless singers, with as much or more vocal variation as the species shows in its plumage. Other members of the genus Melospiza are the Lincoln Sparrow and the Swamp Sparrow. Another especially distinctive sparrow genus is Zonotrichia, the crown sparrows, including white crown, golden crown, white-throated, and harrises. Big, long-tailed, and strongly patterned, they also tend toward plaintive, whistled songs. The juncos, refreshingly enough, are in the genus Junco. 
currently thought to comprise only two species, the dark-eyed and yellow-eyed. The dark-eyed complex contains a number of well-marked races. Two other very boldly marked groups are the snow buntings, genus Plectrophenax, and the long spurs, genus Calcareus. All are birds of open country, tundra, grassland, and shoreline. Long spurs are named for their spiky rear claw. Rather cryptic in winter, their breeding plumages are colorful and unique, about as far from the stereotypical sparrow as one can get. We've looked at ten genera. Does that mean we've covered all the sparrows? No, for better and for worse, it doesn't. But we have touched on an awful lot of them. It's true that sparrows, like red wines and Russian novels, are something of an acquired taste. But those who take the time to know and appreciate them, love them. <laughs>